Hallelujah. Praise God Almighty, precious viewers all over the nations of the earth. I am Prophet Victor Seri Akdiva. Uh, founder of the World Repentance and Restoration Ministry, which has its headquarters in Tanzania, Mwanza. Uh, I want to bring this to your attention, but I'm beginning a very long teaching and a school of ministry online. My intention is to reach the nations, servants of God, the apostles, the prophets, the teachers, the evangelists, the pastors, and uh, the whole body of Christ, worship leaders, church leaders, just to build the body of Christ, even unto the perfection of sainthood that was prophesied by the Apostle Paul in the book of Ephesians chapter 4. Precious viewers all over the world, welcome. Join me anytime you see me online because it's going to be a long journey. It's going to be a deep journey expounding the gospel, reaching many, building up the body of Christ that many may come unto perfection because that is the intention of the gospel of Christ Jesus when he told the Apostles at the very first end, at the beginning of their mission, he told them, when you go, go and preach saying, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is near. That, mind, that reminds me that Jesus was intended to bring many unto himself through the gospel by the holy mission he gave unto his apostles to tell people to repent. And then he introduced a kingdom, a kingdom that is not of this world. It is a kingdom of heaven. A kingdom not made by hands, not crafted by human invention, nor authorities as we have the presidents of the world and the leaders of the nations of the earth. So Jesus was intended to bring nations to himself. and uh, cause them by the gospel to enter into the kingdom of heaven. He himself said, my kingdom is not the kingdom of this world. It is a kingdom from above. And he said, I don't belong to this world. I belong from, I belong above. That means his kingdom is not of the earthly way. It is a kingdom that is heavenly and to make matters straight, it's a spiritual kingdom. It can't be seen by the mortal natural eyes. It is seen 
in the spirit uh, having spiritual implications but revealed in the spirit but it shows manifestations to the physical realm hallelujah so i'll be teaching much on ministry because it is a very big agenda of the body of christ when people get saved they come to church the issue of demons came out of them they were delivered from curses demonic forces satanic principalities and all that it's not the biggest issue the biggest issue is how then will they become disciples and after they have become disciples what will they be doing in the kingdom and how to fulfill the purpose by which they were called that is now ministry hallelujah the purpose to which they were designed pre ordained predestinated that means there is a purpose as to why they enter the kingdom of god that's why they are given time to live on earth if even after they have received the salvation of calvary they still live on this mother earth some 50 years some 60 years some 99 some 100 years why are they still on this mortal earth it's because they have a mission to fulfill they have a ministry to do they have a calling to pursue they have something to perform on this earth before they leave for the spiritual kingdom of heaven at the time when Jesus Christ will be revealed in great power in great light at the day of the Lord so precious viewers from all nations Tanzania Kenya Uganda all over America all over Europe all over Asia all over Africa from the Greenwich Meridian Middle East all over everywhere you're welcome to this school of ministry it shall be very big I look forward to humble and be used of God because I know nothing except that he has revealed himself to me that I may teach the nations his ways especially the servants the body of Christ and especially the church of Jesus Christ please I'll be here for the church it is not a denominational issue it's not by private ministries no it is the body the church oh let Jesus help us and therefore as this hour is concerned I'll in greatly intend on the mission of the fivefold ministry the treasures involved in bringing up the fivefold ministry the powers invested the glory invested the presence invested the directions of the calling ministry and mission and they are their purposes to the body of Christ and what should be the work at the end of the ministry I welcome questions from all ends 
I welcome challenges. I welcome criticisms, whether they'll be there. I welcome all sorts of stuff so that we will see how the body of Christ will come to perfection, the end of it. We may be mature as Christ is and enter into eternity. How I pray that all of you who will be viewing will share the videos to other people to subscribe. You can have your pen, write. You can store these videos, save them any place. You can send them to every part of the nations of the earth as you need. You can do anything so that we reach many people and uh, bring an understanding that is of knowledge and of wisdom to the church and the body of Christ that people may understand the, the core value of ministry, how it is done, and the products, the expectations, the responsibilities of ministry, and then the end. And after that, we have to enter glory in heaven after fulfilling the ministry of the Messiah. Let me begin from the book of Hebrews, uh, the book of Ephesians, just to bring an understanding about ministry. Uh, as I said, it's a school. When people go to school, they expect to learn. And sometimes they have to remove, be removed uh, out of their ignorance. Ignorance has to come out of their minds. School changes perspectives of people, understanding of people. A school can also warn, rebuke, correct, and bring justification to he who has gone to school. School is a place of discipline where people are mentored. They are made to be what they are supposed to be. They are enlightened. All things that are not right are got off from them so that they may be better people for a better generation. That's why people go to school. So it's a school of ministry because I want to deal with matters that are concerned with serving God because there is nothing more important and glorious in the life of man. Listen to me carefully. Except serving him who created him and fulfilling the purposes of God as designed, hallelujah, by the creator. That is the, the core value of a man on earth. Serving the purpose to which you are born. Even Jesus said, I am here for the purpose, you know, of bringing salvation to man. He had a purpose. He said, I, I have gone. I have come to do that which my father sent me to do. The same way he, he did, it is the same way he calls many to come in. Hallelujah. And to serve him. Because it is the only purpose to why he saves many. And as we begin the teaching on ministry, I want to usher in a very deep, deep authoritative scripture that uh, the Apostle Paul wrote in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, uh, verses 8, the Bible says, Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, you know very well that Jesus was crucified. He died on the cross. 
nobody killed Jesus. He just died on the cross. Gave up his spirit. Hallelujah. After dying, he was buried. After being buried, he stayed in the grave as he had said. Three days. There was no change of prophecy on that. Three days in the, in the tomb. On the tomb. Then Jesus resurrected. After he resurrected, he appeared to the disciples, showed himself to them that I am alive again. Hallelujah. He dined with them. Then he told them to go unto Jerusalem, as he had said before. But remember, on the mountain, when he was going up, they surrounded him. And then he breathed on them. And they received the Holy Spirit. And then he got up and went away. He, has, he ascended. He never went down again. When he resurrected, the second place he went to, it is he ascended high. When the Bible says of high, there is no other place that shows it was in the middle or somewhere to speak about. It is he ascended high. That means high. A place that was not low anymore. A place of authority. A place of divine fullness a place of divine glory a place of uh, i don't know how to explain this <laughs> it is a, he ascended high a place of no comparison let me put it that a place of greatness a place of power a place that was not of low things but of higher things then, when he entered the high place, ascended on high, that means it is the holy heavens, the heavens of our God, Jehovah. It was not the first or the second heavens, it was the third. That is the high place where the throne of God is, where the kingdom of heaven is spiritually situated in location. If, it, if, if, if I may use the word, the location of the ministry of God, the location of the kingdom of heaven. And then, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive. He led a train of vanquished force. Hallelujah. There were treasures that were hidden, put in store, graces, favors, divine authorities, jurisdictions that were put and stored in the high place. Hallelujah. In the high place. That's why he ascended after resurrection and then entered and he took captive, captivity captive, leading a train of vanquished foes. In, in other words, I've used the treasures, hidden, glory, power, authority, things that were assigned for various purposes in this kingdom of God. Treasures, anointings, purposes, graces. He just took them captive. Can you imagine? You go into a place, then you, you take the best of the clothes in a nation. 
the best of the gold, the best of uh, uh, Jesus Christ, the best of, let me say, metals, the best of minerals, the best of resources, the best of abilities then you take them captive that means they belong to jesus after that he took all that and it was in his hands hallelujah remember it's a school of ministry then after taking all those things then this jesus christ and he bestowed gifts of men. Can you imagine this? The, the, the taking captive, captivity of captive, led, leading a train of vanquished foes. And you know, a train is an elongated vehicle, elongated, an elongated transport means, you know that. Having very many bodies joined together. So if you, you mean a train, there are very many things that were in store in the kingdom of heaven that man was not accessed to. <laughs> this is a school of ministry. I want to pray that the wisdom of God will help us. And there were many things put in, in store that men had not been accessed to. And they were hidden up in treasure, treasury in heaven, put in custody. Then Jesus took them. And after that, he bestowed gifts to men. You realize before he gives the gifts to men, he entered on high ascended very high, took captive, led a train of vanquished foes. Treasures were taken by himself, Jesus Christ, himself. And then after that, he changes direction and he calls, he gives gifts to men. We can say he took the most glorious things the mighty treasures that were hidden up in heaven, treasured, stored up. Then he turned on the other side and then he begins to call men. It means the treasures that he took captive, he turned them into gifts or rather he processed them into gifts and began to call men give them the gifts give them the gifts giving gifts to men from the highest place the high place in heaven from the treasures of heaven what do you understand about this Precious viewers all over the world. Ministry is a very important thing in the body of Christ. The callings, the gifts of God, it's a very important sector in the body of Christ. And This is why, in the interpretation, is God calling up men to be prophets, apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, pastors. It's not a simple thing and something to take for guarantee. The gifts of God are very powerful. They are not as you think. 
They are not as people have taken them lightly. People do ministry in a very simple, easy, and normal manner. But it is not the way it's supposed to be. He ascended high, taken captive, vanquished, trained, forced, and then he changed to the direction of men after he has ascended. Then he gave them gifts. He dropped them on earth to his body, his people. He began to drop the gifts, drop the gifts, drop the gifts. Drop them down, drop them down to them, download them to their system, to their hearts, their minds. He downloaded everything to their hearts. Different men. And then the Bible explains deeper. Verse 9 of Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 9. He says, But he ascended. Now, what can this he ascended mean? But he, that he had previously descended from the heights of heaven into the depths. You see? Heads. The lower parts of the earth. That means he entered, he went deep to the lowest part of the earth before he went up. The same Jesus Christ, he who ascended is the very same as he who also has ascended high above all the heavens. Because he went to the deepest parts of the earth, he also went to the highest parts of the earth. That his presence might fill all things, the whole universe. From the lowest to the highest. So the presence of God fills the whole earth. The presence of Jesus Christ fills the lower parts of the earth to the highest parts of the universe. The whole universe. From the lowest parts to the highest parts. That means... The omnipresent factor comes in. Hallelujah. Before he gave the gifts, as he turned to men, he explains that his presence, he is omnipresent. Yes, I am giving gifts to men, but I am present in the whole universe. On earth, in heaven, beneath the earth, from the lowest to the highest, I am. Hallelujah. I am. My presence overtakes everything. My presence is everywhere. He's not like the devil who can be found in this point and the other point he's not there. No, 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 no. You cannot compare him to, to demonic forces, principalities and powers. You cannot compare Jesus to demons. You cannot compare Jesus to government leaders and all the things you are seeing in the world. No. He is from all ends to all ends, from the lowest to the highest. So as even he gives the gifts to man, the prophets, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the teachers, the pastors, he does it having filled the whole universe with his presence. And that's why I say this is a school of ministry. Because there are times people do ministry and they think God is nowhere to see them. As they begin their own things calling ministry. This God is omnipresent. This Jesus Christ you're talking about. Who gives men the gifts and calls them for ministry. And his purpose that which they were born for. He is everywhere. Omnipresent factor.
Hallelujah. And you realize that before he calls his servants, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the teachers and the pastors, and whoever else that might be called in the body of Christ. Because of course I'll call, I'll teach about other ministries in the body of Christ, apart from the ones I have mentioned. Before he calls them to mission and ministry, he admits that my presence, my glory, my personality is everywhere. Jesus Christ is so amazing, so powerful a savior we have. He says, my presence to fill all things. In fact, he did not say man. All things. All creation. Do you know that trees have the presence of God? If, if God withdraws his presence, trees will not be there. And that's why I tell you, before you talk about ministry, ministry, please, register yourself in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Because the presence of God is the signifying factor that the gifts are from God. Oh, let me repeat this. The presence of God goes before gifts and the callings of God. He meets his people in his presence. His people meet him when they go to his presence. When they admit to his personality. When they admit to his glorious kingdom in relationship, in purpose and mission of the heart. His presence fills all things. Why does Jesus bring, and it is revealed through the Apostle Paul that his presence fills all things before he now begins to share the gifts differently to all people. Let us be very careful servants of God. Ministry is not about names. Ministry is not about being famous. Ministry is not about big name. And all those arrangements, protocols, infrastructures that you made, things you put around, programs, the ministry itself originates from the presence of God. Did you meet the presence of God? Have you the presence of God? Have you qualified to be in His presence? Have you walked into his presence? Have you served him in his presence? Have you gone forth to have the presence of God in your life? The power of God in your life? The glory of God in your life? Presence of God is the first essential factor before the gifts of God. And, of course, when you talk about the presence of God, feeling all things, we go unto consecration, purity, righteousness, holiness. The whole fact is called holiness. We appeared before him. We made a, a relationship with him. He called us out of darkness. We have a relationship with him. We are, we are made of the image of him. We are accepted in his presence. We have qualified and come into his holy presence. We have been elected, chosen, first of all, to be in his presence. And we are in his presence. 
His presence controls our lives, leads our lives, sanctifies us, makes us what we should be in His presence. So, His presence fills the whole universe from the lowest to the highest before He gives man the gifts. I pray that you understand me that uh, the first thing you should do before you pursue ministry are you in the presence of God? Are you walking with God? Is God with you? Do you have a relationship with Him? Are you pursuing that which is His ways? Because the presence of God is holy, is pure, unadulterated. No f falsehood, no lies, no deceits, no immorality, no wickedness, no forces. That's why he gives us to be his sons, the authority to become his sons, his children, before we are called into ministry. Why? The process of sonship is about his presence, which makes us have intimacy with him, spiritual intimacy, that calls us back into a relationship that is built by believing him and turning away from wickedness and our sinful lives. Hallelujah. Then, as we resurrect with him, he goes high and then he gives us the gifts because we belong to him now. We are in him and the presence of God is in him. And you know, don't mistake this. The presence of God is holy, is pure, is righteous. It cannot intermingle with anything that is evil or wicked or unrighteous. Hallelujah. And that's why I'll say gifts are holy. I don't know how people claim that I have a gift and I'm sleeping with the ladies up and down. What do you mean? Before gifts of God, maybe it's a gift of another spirit. It is a, a gift of another power, not the power of God. Because the presence of God goes before calling. It's the one that creates the environment, creates the room, creates the condition and the justification of man to be called and be given gifts. That's why when Isaiah was called to be a prophet, when he saw the presence of God, he fell down and he was like saying, I'm dead. I am dead. I'm a dead man. Why? I've seen the glory of God. I stay among people with an, of unclean lips, a generation that are liars, backbiters, slanderers, Backbiters. How can I deal with such a glorious God? Then an angel appeared with a call of fire and he put upon the lips of Isaiah and he told Isaiah, your sins are cleaned, blotted, taken away. Why is that aspect taking place? The presence admitted justification of Isaiah the prophet. The presence admitted something that was not common in the generation of Isaiah the prophet. Hallelujah. The power was so glorious that it had, first of all, to justify Isaiah the prophet sanctify, purify, 
have intimacy with Isaiah. I pray that you have intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Intimacy with Jesus. Don't just go for ministry. Intimacy with him that calls men for ministry. Do you understand what I mean? And then after that, the presence now admits that Isaiah is qualified. You'll hear after some time. Then God says, whom shall I send? Isaiah says, I'm here. But at first, Isaiah could not admit the presence disqualified him. He was first of all to be, to have an intimacy with the presence of God, to be justified and qualified into the presence and the glory of God before the calling and mission. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. That means the mission was easy. Only by coming to the presence of God, have intimacy, be disqualified first, and then be qualified to deserve. And then be released to go and serve him in the purpose of a prophet of God or a servant of Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. He is alive. Preaching today. And now, we must be careful to train up ourselves in the presence of God. We need to be holy. Watch out on what we watch, talk, hear, feel, think, do, act, decide. We must be very clear on those issues because when we miss a mark in those matters, we will disqualify ourselves from the presence of God, which is our justifier, our qualifier agent, our deserving agency for us to be given mandates, gifts, and callings to serve this spiritual, most holy kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. I pray that Jesus will make you understand. Jesus will make you feel it. And welcome from all nations of the earth. We are in the school of ministry. So the presence of God was a qualifier first. When the apostle Paul, before he became apostle, he was Saul. He was moving to Damascus to go and destroy saints, take them to jail. He was struck by lightning. This was the, the, another format of the presence of God, lightning. He fell down. He could see no more at that time. He asked, who are you? I am Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. The striking was the presence of God stopped Saul from the mission to attack Christians. And the same presence made him blind disqualified him first. The same presence spoke out by the Spirit. I'm Jesus Christ whom you are persecuting. And then Jesus began to reveal himself to Paul. Now, so, before he became Paul, on what mission he had to carry from that very day? Disqualified, then qualified. By the presence of he who said, my presence fills the whole universe. All things, the whole universe, all things, from the lowest to the highest. I have come, I brought you down, 
disqualified you, then I'm qualifying you. This is the presence now. So differentiate between receiving gifts and the presence. The presence is the one that qualifies us. When Jesus comes into intimacy with us, it's the first qualification to be his servants. Rather, don't be confused. His glory, his presence, his power cometh down and brings a, a divine change a divine disqualification then a divine qualification at the same time it happens the interchanging you are divinely disqualified so you are attacking my church you are attacking me you are disqualified this is not right then paul you are qualified now what you have seen and heard from this day you shall testify to the Gentiles and to the nations, a teacher of the Gentiles, you are now commissioned after being discommissioned. Hallelujah. I'm blessed to share such a, a mighty teaching with the people from different ends. How I pray that Jesus will help you understand and be filled by his glory so after that soul was directed on what to do just still blind until he accomplished some short processes of qualification then he began the mission after that hallelujah praise the lord i need to make you feel at home that we are talking about the school of ministry so desire to have the presence of god first the glory of god going with you moses said we will not leave this mountain we won't leave until you go with us ministry is not about about names greatness being farmers being hard having great followers and multitudes having a big name. Ministry is not about how many people, how many nations you travel. Ministry is not about all that. Do you carry the presence of God? Are you in the presence of God? Is the presence of God in your life? Are you walking in the way of God? Are you consecrated, purified? That you can get to help the body of Christ, the nations of the earth. Ministry is about his presence. That's why when he called the disciples, when he ascended and he had now appeared to them before he went to ascension, he said, Behold, I am with you. What does that mean? The presence. The presence began before they went. They went to the calling and mission. Be very careful, brothers and sisters. It's a hard thing to serve God if you don't agree with his presence. Bear with me. Maybe if you serve demons, powers of hell, and other things, but maybe you serve fallen angels, but Jesus Christ of Nazareth, one of the mandates is his presence. Don't go out in ministry running, falling here and there, chasing after names, putting bodyguards around you, putting everything. No, please start in the presence of God in the arena of his presence, in the glory of his presence. Let you be qualified in his presence. 
then let him give you the gifts and callings and send you. You'll do a very mighty and glorious job. And no devil will touch your life. He will protect you. He will grant you all that is needed as a servant of God. I'm telling you by experience. Once you lose the presence of God and you're not in the presence of God, ministry becomes a bad thing ever on this earth. It becomes the most and worst thing to do. Because the kingdom we serve is a heavenly kingdom, a spiritual kingdom, a holy kingdom, not of this world, not of these nations, neither of the authorities of the world. It is a heavenly kingdom. Be the heavenly authority. God bless you. I'll continue from there. Remember to be in his presence. In Jesus' name, amen.